principle that you must challenge jurisdiction at the very beginning. In the incarceration contract, they have this rule. It's not a law. It's a rule that you must challenge jurisdiction at the onset. As a matter of fact, they even made it a federal rule that you must challenge their jurisdiction. Now, I challenge the very fact that they would have such a stupid rule which violates your rights that are secured by the Constitution. Why is the rule stupid? Because the law says that they must have jurisdiction at the onset, that they cannot act without jurisdiction. So if they are acting and they don't have jurisdiction, then there's no need for you to challenge it at the onset because it is void from the onset. However, because they operate under presumption of law, another rule, not a law, presumption of law has never been the intent in anybody's constitutional amendment. Go ahead, show me. Go ahead, pick one. No, no, seriously, pick one. And you will not find anything in the Bill of Rights that talks about a presumption and the courts operating off a presumption. No, this is something that some stupid judge over the years or some stupid lawyer decided that, oh, that's reasonable. And everybody has gone along with it. Nobody is challenging this. So let's do this again. It is clear from the record of the appeal that the petitioner only generally mentioned personal jurisdiction in his time-barred petition for reassessment. Further, pursuant to rule, Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 12B2, oh, this is not just federal rule, this is <laughs> West Virginia rules as well. Litigants must file a motion challenging personal jurisdiction from the onset of the case. Ladies and gentlemen, you can generally challenge jurisdiction and it involves personal jurisdiction. However, we did exactly that. We have a case against this um, company that has been deciding that it's going to try to run us out of business. It's called PennyMac. You guys have known about the defrauding company known as PennyMac. Yes, I can call it a defrauder because it was part of the lawsuit that the government filed against it in 2014. You remember Kamala Harris? She's the one who led that campaign. Yeah, she was the attorney general for the state of California at the time. So she led the campaign against the banks, Penny Mac being one of them, that admitted that they defrauded the American people. So they are criminals, and yet the court is allowing them to come in. Now, see, we not only challenge the court's jurisdiction, but we also challenge the jurisdiction of the attorneys. Because, you know, when you, you call the bank and you say, look, I need to get into my account. Okay, here, no, no, just, just, no, you don't need to verify my account. Just let me get into my account. It's my account. I don't know what you're talking about, verification. I ain't giving you no right to verify my account. You just gonna let me into my account. I don't want to hear nothing about no, no, anything else. You gonna do what I say you gonna do, or it's gonna be on, mother, okay? Before you can get into your account, they want to verify. They want proof that you are who you say you are, or that you have the right to represent or speak on behalf of someone. My brothers and my sisters, my mothers, my uncles, my cousins, my nieces, my nephews. Please y'all, give a listen. If attorneys, judges, and everybody and their grandmama make you verify, I want y'all to pay attention because some of y'all are not hearing me though. And I know some of y'all are not hearing me. If they make you verify, we're going to do this again. There's an easier way to do this without having all the numbers because we started at number five. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to do that. And as we do that, then we're going to do, let's put it in with the colors. I love colors, Mommy. Oh, it still did the numbers. Oh, no, we ain't having that. I said I don't want no numbers. Lord have mercy. See, that's what I got to deal with, y'all. So we're going to do that. Now, let's see if it's going to give me what I need. All right, let's get back to the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and it did the numbers again. See, I can't have that. And so I don't want the numbers. So we're going to do something different. Let's see if it's going to do the same thing now. Okay, that's what I was trying to do. All right, now, let's go back up. Uh, we're going to scroll back up. Now, we're going to use all of these. 
this is part of the memorandum section of the motion that we're following. Or excuse me, affidavit. We don't do motions. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, go back and look at the rules. You're allowed to file an affidavit as a response. You don't need to file a motion. Okay, there is no rule making for the court. The court doesn't get the rule over you and tell you what you can and cannot do, what you must do. Now, there'll be a lot of those ignorant attorneys who will sit up there and disagree with me, tell me, oh, no, yes, they can. No, they can't. The only reason why they do it, pay attention, the only reason why they do it is because nobody has challenged it. Okay, I challenge their stupidity. That's what I do because I don't appreciate it. I don't want nobody telling me what I can and cannot do in my own case. It's my case. Go ahead. Look at the name in the caption. It doesn't have the judge's name on there. Well, that's because of the... I don't want to hear that, people. I want you to understand. When it's my case, it's mine. Okay, the clerks of the court don't have the authority to control my case. Okay, there is no constitutional right for the clerk of the court to exist. They assist the court. They're not assisting me. I didn't ask for them. I don't need them to file my documents. Well, then who's going to file them? Your mama going to file them. Don't be asking me no stupid question like that. The court will file it. Well, the court uses blah, blah, blah. I don't care who the court uses. Do you not understand? The court uses whom the court uses. And it must accept the responsibility for that. I don't have to. There, again, is no law for me to accept such. That's not my problem. Okay? The court is going to sit up there and have its own problems dealing with its own stupidity. I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know what I got something to do with, y'all? I got something to do with me. That's right. Only me. I don't. But you that's selfishness. That's it could be whatever you say it is. Now I'm sorry. Because sometimes some of y'all, y'all just y'all y'all got that mentality of these ignorant lawyers. Now, I I don't have the mentality of ignorant lawyers. I know how they think. I don't need to think like them to understand them. And when I say ignorant lawyers, they went to some school, they studied some pay attention rules of the court, procedures of the court. And then they studied case law. They didn't study law. They studied rules of the court, procedures of the court, and case law. They did not study the law. That's why many of them cannot tell you the fundamental principles of law. What are the fundamental principles for which the laws of the United States were established? Are they not? Are they not? Ladies and gentlemen, let me say it again. Are they not the common law? Well, if it's the common law, how come the courts are not following the common law? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go, go take your time. I, I know it's going to take you a minute because you got to gather your thoughts. you got to try to figure out how to answer my question. So if it's founded on the common law, how come we don't have common law decisions? Oh, but we do have common law decisions. You know what happens to our common law decisions that are issued by the so-called courts? Well, they are um, covered over. Okay, they are covered over. You see, they, they do these, these unpublished cases so that you all can't see what's going on. So that you all can't see what the judges are saying in the first place. It is well established. Established, how is it established? It's not established in law. It's a it's a policy. It is well-established policy that any challenge to the court's personal jurisdiction over a defendant must be raised prior to a plea. Do you understand why? Really? Well, let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna go back here just for a second. I need to go to saalimited.com. S A A L I M I T E D dot com. Okay. Now, again, like we told you, they're coming after the organization, and they're coming after us with three different law firms, nine different attorneys, all trying to shut me down, all trying to stop me. They're not trying to stop the organization, per se. They're naming me. As a matter of fact, an individual just went into a court to ask for confirmation, and they're listing my name. 
well, how come none of you mother, I mean, excuse me, how come none of you courts will call me into court? They have called every other person to testify. They've called every other person to do depositions. And not everybody submitted to that junk because they know that they can challenge the court's jurisdiction at the onset. The biggest way to challenge it, most people would agree, would not to respond. Oh, I'm not going to respond to that, but no, you do respond. You respond by challenging their jurisdiction. You get a ticket. You challenge the jurisdiction of the court at the onset. You get a ticket. You challenge the jurisdiction of the court at the onset. It is a general rule. How is it a general rule? Well, ladies and gentlemen, shall we go to the contract section? Let's go down. I haven't been to this site in a while. Well, because I don't need to go here. Okay. Let's look at the contracts. I want the contracts. Application. No, that's just going to take me to the link. There is an easier way. I'm going to do it the back door way. Forward slash PDFS. Enter. Now, it has its own PDF section, okay? Now, I want the incarceration contract. Now, this has all the Bradley Christopher Stark information, duty to respond, PDF, that they have a duty to respond, that type of stuff. So I just want you, I want to go into the contracts. It's called the contracts. These are the contracts. I want the incarceration contract. Now, I could have gone through my system and downloaded it, but I shut off some of the services, and thus that particular service I have to reactivate. And I didn't feel like doing all of that while I'm talking to you guys. You know what I'm saying, Vern? Okay, Vern. Ernie? Anyway. Give me one second, y'all, for us to pull that document up. It is a well-established rule, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a law, but you'll talk to attorneys and they'll tell you that it is the law. I even had the court tell me that it is the law that only attorneys can represent corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, I dare anybody to find that law. I dare anybody to find this so-called phantom law that doesn't exist anywhere, that only attorneys can represent corporations. Go ahead. Well, the corporation is a creature of the state, and as a creature of the state, it is bound by the rules of the state. Ah, but no, a corporation may be a creature of the state, but it has constitutional rights. It is deemed a person under the Constitution. Thus, it has rights secured by the Constitution. Hold on now, Johnny. Hold on now, Messi. Hold on now, Annie. It says they have constitutional rights. Well, if they have constitutional now y'all pay attention to the phrase. If they have constitutional rights, now remember, you don't have any constitutional rights. Your rights are secured by the Constitution. You didn't get your rights from no piece of paper. Your rights were already there when you were born. Born, I said. When you were born. Ladies and gentlemen, if corporations under Supreme Court case law and we'll do that. We'll type that in in a second. If corporations have rights, constitutional rights, let's go here. Okay, we got that. We don't need that. So we're going to get rid of this for now. We're going to double this. You're going to double it? Yeah, we're going to we'll double and duplicate. We're going to do blue, 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 duplicate. Okay, so we're going to duplicate it. And what we're going to do, since we're going to duplicate that, and we've already taken care of that, we're going to go here. Hopefully it'll let me. I'm doing so much. Y'all can see I got so many things open. But that's what I do. I task and multi-do it at the same time. Okay, let's get rid of that. See, it's it's still trying to catch up to me, y'all. Because let's go ahead and put y'all on pause for a minute. There we go. See, every time I do that, all of a sudden it wants to act right. When I talk about putting it on pause, it, it just, it's that, that Google thing. It's that AI thing. Y'all see this thing got AI too? AI. Okay, now watch this. C O R P O R A T I O N S R P E R S O N S. Corporations are persons under the law. What law? Statutory law. Well, remember, a group of people are incorporated. We, the people of the United States, is a corporation. It's a group of incorporated individuals. 
It's a corporation. Not a corporation in the fact that McDonald's, Burger King, but it's a corporation corporation in formation holding their corporations can invoke the benefits of the provisions of the Constitution and laws which guarantee to persons the enjoyment of property. See, that corporations are persons within the meaning of the clause in question. Corporations are persons, ladies and gentlemen. And because a corporation is a person, will you see it? Individual means person, individual, corporation, blah, 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 blah. Corporations are persons. And they have the guaranteed right to the enjoyment of property. So when you hear that banks cannot own property, that's impossible because banks can own property. Holding that the owners of corporations who are alleged RICO enterprise persons are sufficiently distinct from the corporation as an enterprise. See, logistically speaking, an employee who conducts the affairs of the corporation through a legal act comes within the terms of the statute that forbids any person unlawfully to conduct any enterprise, particularly when the statute explicitly defines person, it includes any individual. Well, it doesn't include any natural person. Go ahead, take a look and see where the statute gained jurisdiction over a natural person. The Constitution doesn't give government authority over natural persons, save that they violate the constitutional rights of another party, where they injure another party, then yes, it can have jurisdiction at that point. You feels me? You follows me? Now, we got to show you, because that's what we said we were going to do, in this document right here, how you must challenge the court's jurisdiction from the onset. Why? Because the courts want jurisdiction. They are hungry for power. That's why they are always talking about their power, their authority. Okay? They are power juggernauts. I need... Give me one second. I'm looking... I, I could put in the exact information for the case... But I'm just going to scroll down and find the case. So y'all just give me a second. We talk about jurisdiction right there. Okay. And we talk about challenging their jurisdiction. Because jurisdiction, it explains what jurisdiction is. It's the power to hear a matter. Okay. The right to decide and all that other wonderful stuff. So now let's talk about how those who do the incarceration contract, it's already in their so-called original notification to the court the very act of pleading to an indictment admits its genuineness as a record so the moment you plea the moment you enter a plea you give them evidence that there is a case you can't say i don't plea what how do you plea oh i challenge your jurisdiction over my person over the subject matter and over the party. <laughs> in rem, persona, and, uh, wait, in rem, persona. See, I can't remember all three of them, but I just challenge the jurisdiction, especially over my person. That's how you do that, ladies and gentlemen. I just challenge the jurisdiction. I just, no, I just challenge, you didn't hear me say I challenge the jurisdiction, mother. No, 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 you, you, can't, you can't put this off until next week. Uh, uh, either you have it or you don't. Prove it on the record. No, don't uh, don't say you got jurisdiction. That's not proof. Just because you open and close your mouth, that ain't proof of nothing, homie. I, I know you're wearing a black robe. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand the idiot wearing the black robe? Do you know that he's performing a ritual? A religious ceremony? All rise. He's resurrecting individuals. He's a mortician. Well, actually, he is a warlock. He is a priest. Okay, he is a priest, and this priest is performing resurrections. Why do you think they say all rise? Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Why do you think they say all rise? Why do you think they go through that ritual every single hearing, every single proceeding, every single time that idiot walks into the room in a black robe? Why do you think they do that? You go into the judge's chambers, nobody says all rise. Come on, I've been in judges' chambers before. Ain't nobody ever said, all rise, when I entered into a judge chamber. 
So why? 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 Do they say all rise when everybody's in the court? Oh, well, they say that because whatever you say. But I do know that they're performing resurrection. How do I know? Because each one of those all caps names, all capital block name individuals in the courtroom, they're all civilly dead. Go ahead. They're artificial creatures. They're civilly dead. Corporations are dead. There is no alive corporation on this planet. Go ahead. Go check it out. Corporations are creatures of the state, owing their existence and chartered power to the state. The state can't make something alive. That's why a state can't prove that you are alive. So no state agent, no state officer can determine if you are alive or not. And people are going to the state to prove that they are alive. Oh, by the way, the fact that you have to prove that you're alive means that the Sesta KV Trust still exists. Hold on. The plea forms is the beginning of the issue to be tried, without which, without there being a plea from you, prosecution doesn't plea. They offer you a plea agreement. So stop pleading, people. Stop introducing pleadings. Motions are pleadings. When you put that bracket, that box, that's a pleading. You don't believe me? Hold on. Hold on. We're going to go... Hold on. Come on now. Get me to that page. That's what I want. See this page right here, the one that I'm working on? When I'm putting these case laws in? I want y'all to see something about pleadings. Hold on. We can go all the way up here. See that right there? You don't see no lines. Etc. all. Etc. all. Case number. No title to no court. They've been accepting it. They ain't got no choice. Affirma David's mother. I mean, people. Affirma David's. Okay. Now that we understand this, sorry, we're going to get rid of that because that's where we were. And then I'm going to continue from there when I get back to this because that's what I'm working on today. Plus, I'm finishing up the complaint. Okay, got it? So I just needed to take the time to explain to all of you stop entering pleas, stop saying not guilty, stop saying no contest, stop saying all of that. Say, I just challenge your jurisdiction. That's, that's all. Because look, it is elementary rule of pleading, elementary, basic, that a plea to the jurisdiction is the first step in the order of pleading and that any other additional plea which refers to the court, any additional proof or acknowledgement, other question is a tacit, oh, I agree, I admit it, within the context of this agreement shall always imply conduct, act, actions, inactions or otherwise amounting to or being construed as a sin. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. This is what we've added. Everything in these parentheses, I've added. That's why it's highlighted. Admission to the court has the right jurisdiction to judge the cause, i.e. subject matter, personum, in rem, jurisdiction. See, I just said it. Subject matter, personum, over the persons, in rem, jurisdiction. Venue! And as a waiver of all exceptions. Exceptions? Exceptions? I challenged your system. Nope, you waived it. The moment you entered a plea, you waived your right to challenge the court's jurisdiction. It's a rule. It's a, not a law. And take a look at how old this case is. That's why it is elementary. Okay. Whenever it appears upon the record of the court that it has no jurisdiction, nothing which the parties may do or omit will give it jurisdiction. But where a want of jurisdiction may exist consistently with the record, a plea to the action is a waiver of any exception to jurisdiction. You can't challenge it! So, ladies and gentlemen, I do need for all of you to understand, because many of you are not understanding. Okay, guess what? We're going to actually put this in our response to the court. This is going to be our proof of claim. We're just going to add it because I need to bring this up on appeal. Because my job is to bring an end to all of this stupidity. What do you mean by stupidity? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me let me see if I can explain. We're going to copy that because we're putting this in our our memorandum. What's happening is that this has been going on for centuries. And yet it has not been a law. See, the United States, they don't get to just make up this rule 
and then you follow the rule. Okay, follow the leader, Rakam will say peace. But there is no law requiring you to follow this stupid rule. Pay attention. It is a rule of the court. They don't mention a law. Even those cases that we just went to, it just said it is elementary. Where was it elementary at? When did it become elementary? When did it become elementary in the United States? Does anybody know? Because I don't remember. I, I don't remember seeing that. When I went to school and I was going over the law, nobody ever told me, oh, yes, and by the way, you got to challenge the jurisdiction. But the people who put together the form, the document, laws that you did not know exist, they said it, got to challenge it right off the bat. They've been telling us that for years. Many of us have not paid attention. See, I've been challenging jurisdiction, and I only decided now it's time for me to go back and get their attention. Because, you know, sometimes they need their attention, God, and they need that beat, okay? And so I'm going to beat as best I can, okay? This time I'm going to put some nails in the board. Because I, I want to make sure they get an understanding. Because right now, they don't look like they understand. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to finish this document. Because this is a document that I'm working out in the case for which I am. Well, they're trying to keep me from being in, involved. But I am involved. And they keep mentioning my name. So, I am a party at interest. Not of interest. No, I'm a party at interest. Objection to personal jurisdiction must be asserted in the answer or in the pre-answer motion. We did a motion to the court. Well, uh, affidavit, sorry. I keep saying that motion thing. <laughs> I am so sorry. Anyway, we did a response to the court. The court held it for more than 30 days. And then after they held it for 30 days, they said, oh no, you guys filed it too late because they filed it almost 45 days after we sent it in. The rules of practice require the defendant to challenge personal jurisdiction by a motion to dismiss. No, it doesn't require you to challenge it by a motion to dismiss. See, our motion challenged their motion, saying that the court had no jurisdiction. A motion to dismiss, uh-uh. There is no rule. See, those are rules. A motion to dismiss, that's a rule. Go back and look. You don't have to do a motion to dismiss, but a party must raise any objection to personal jurisdiction in its first motion. Okay, they play around with this. They change the rules as they see fit. Okay, so I don't go by the rules. You don't go by the rules? Man, I can tell you, you don't go by the rules. Man, I, I, I'm just listening to you. I can tell you don't like rules. No, wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I love rules. I play by the rules. But I don't play by their rules. Like I said, I'm in their arena, but I'm bringing my own ball. They cannot stop me from playing with my own ball in their own courts. Why? Because it's their court. So I'm bringing my ball. There ain't no rules against bringing my own ball to play ball in their court. Go ahead. Go check it out. So I'm bringing my own ball. And that's why they can't stand me. All eyes on me. Okay. I can't say who can't stand me because all eyes on me won't let me say that. Okay. No, you got to understand Tupac and All Eyes on Me and Big Hank, uh, you know, what he says and how they can't stand him. Y'all don't want me to say that on this video. Okay. No, he ain't cursing, but he's saying some words, all right. So I, I told people who I be, and now it's time for me to make sure this court understands who I be. See, what's happening is I'm supposed to be just some lay person. They want to call someone somebody sovereign, so-called citizen. Okay, like Redman said, I'll be that. I will be that. But until you call me something else, you ignorant mother, you had better have jurisdiction to say something like that about me or I will come after you for defamation. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if they have no jurisdiction, then that means that they're operating in excess to their authority. Here's the thing. The courts have said that the judges, literally, these judges, when they're operating, the courts have made it clear to us that they have immunity, that they cannot be held liable for their acts. Well, no, sorry, <laughs> because their acts, when they are acting, guess what they're doing? They're acting under their capacity as judge. They're saying that they are a judge and that 
presumably is a judge under their office because they're there. And when they were placed in office, they took an oath of office because they can't claim to be a judge without that oath. Now that oath was administered under provisions of the constitution. So if it was administered under provisions, pay attention to the logic, everyone. If their oath was administered under provisions of the constitution, that means they sit in the constitutional capacity. Does it matter if they act like it? Does it matter what the facts are? It matters that they took an oath and that oath that they took was administered under guidance and provisions of the constitution. And since it was done under guidance and provisions of the constitution, that means that we can proceed, construe, and understand that they're operating under the constitution. Okay, that's what we can gather. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we are putting this in here, the proof of claims, got to get rid of D because D ain't supposed to be there. See you later, D. Man, D, I don't know why you always showing up when you ain't want it. Okay, the reason why we're putting this in here because it actually brings forth that claim. That's why we listed it. Oh, good. Ooh, I didn't ask you to be downloading nothing. Okay, we're going to get rid of C because B already covers C. You know, A before C except after D. You know what I'm saying? So, A, D, D. A before C except A, D. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, by putting in this information, we're continuing and running challenge to jurisdiction. If the court had no jurisdiction to begin with, and each one of those incarceration contracts shows that they violate the individual's rights. See, there's no such thing as the court just having jurisdiction over somebody without having jurisdiction. See, the power to act is the power to act. That's why the very first beginning of the... Watch this. We're going to go here. I said incarceration. Where are you at, incarceration? All right. We're going to go up. So I could show you that because I did point it out initially, but we're going to do it again because it's one of the first things that it says. Objection. The act of any party who objects in some matter or proceeding the course of a trial, an argument or reason argued by him in support of his contention that the matter or the proceedings objected to is improper or illegal, used to call the court's attention to improper evidence and or procedures. That's why you object. That's why I continue to say in our documents and we object. Just that simple, okay? Just that simple. Now, I did add this in our original response, this information right here, but hold on. From the beginning, it has been said, as stated, has objected to the court's jurisdiction, documenting the unwillingness of the defendant to submit to the court's jurisdiction, leaving the court and the so-called prosecution in want of writ or bill, an objection to the jurisdiction to the ground of exemption from the process of the court in which the suit is brought or the manner in which the defendant is brought into it. But when the objection goes to the power of the court over the parties or the subject matter, as was the case and is the case at present, the defendant need not, for he cannot give the plaintiff a better writ or bill running the proceedings or any orders or decrees or judgments, warrants, decisions, any proceedings without limits prescribed by quorum non judice and its actions nullity. That's why we put that there. So we're going to add this to our document as well. I love case law. Well, there's no such thing as case law. You guys do know. You, you all got, come on now. Y'all know that case law, there's no such thing as case law, right? Well, first of all, the judges... Only Congress gets to make law. Congress shall make no law. Okay? Only Congress gets to make law. The courts were never empowered to make law. Uh -huh. And because the courts were never empowered to make law, they have no authority. So there is no such thing as case law. You, you really, a lot of people will not understand that. A lot of people won't get that. Because, well, the courts, is, and, the courts is, and, and the courts could be whatever they want. But what they don't get to do is make law. So there is no such thing as case law. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's this thing that people call case law, but that's not law. 
Those are just the opinions and decisions and uh, rulings, and they can't even rule. They don't have the authority to rule. They, they don't have that authority. They thought they had that authority. They wish they had that authority, but they don't have that authority. I think that's what I think it is. I think that there is already an A here, and I don't want there to be an A, so we're going to have to go back down, and I'm going to have to change that letter. So y'all just take me off of this ride, and then we're going to let y'all get on about y'all business. I was watching one of the videos the other day, and I saw that I was doing exactly what I'm doing now. And the reason why I leave this in there, okay, does anybody want to understand? You, you want to understand? Okay. The reason why I leave this information in there, where I'm showing you guys what I'm doing and how I'm adding it, so that you, those of you who are trying to perfect the same thing, can perfect it. Like I said, to this very day, these idiots have never responded directly to any of the things I placed in the record. They'll say things like denied. Excuse me, you can't deny an affidavit. There's only one way to respond to an affidavit, and that is rebuttal. Go back. Anybody want to check the law on responding to an affidavit? There's only one way. To, a judge cannot deny an affidavit. He cannot strike an affidavit, but this is their practice. They can't do that. They, they cannot do that. They don't have the authority authority this is my uh audio where it read back the document that we were just covering and i can throw that away okay with that being said ladies and gentlemen those of you who are going to court doesn't matter what you're going to court for you need to understand you need to understand you need to understand that you must challenge the jurisdiction you must challenge the jurisdiction. You must object to the jurisdiction. They bring you to court for anything. Challenge the jurisdiction. But hold on. What if you didn't do it at the very beginning? Then you challenge your jurisdiction and then challenge the rule. Because as a rule, jurisdiction may be challenged at any time. At no time was there a law created that said only this jurisdiction, only in rem jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. Or only... Um, personal and rem, subject matter jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. But personal jurisdiction, that can't be challenged. Once you plead to the jurisdiction of the court, mm -mm, can't be challenged. But wait a minute, there is no statute of limitation for fraud. So if you challenge the jurisdiction based upon fraud, based upon a judicial officer committing fraud upon the court, committing fraud upon you, and committing fraud upon the public by simulating a legal proceeding, simulating a judicial act, of course you can challenge that. Okay? You just have to know how. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I know that some people say that, oh, that man got so much information. Oh, he just knows so much. No, I don't. It's just when I was a kid, we, I stayed in-house. My mother didn't let us go out in the neighborhood because she didn't want us playing with the, the roughnecks. Okay? She didn't want us growing up in a gang-infested environment, which where is where I grew up at. She didn't want us becoming like them. That, that's been my life, because even as a Jehovah's Witness, everybody, oh, so you don't want to be around us. You better believe I don't want to be around you. I don't want to act like you. I don't want to be like you. I don't want to sit up here and violate my God's laws. It was until I started hanging out with mother, I mean, like you all. That's right. I said you all. Because many of you know that you don't have any morals. Oh my God, you just sat up here and offended us. So what? So what? I said something that you don't agree with. Sue somebody. Go ahead and kill somebody. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, you might as well just sit up here and go chew some bubble gum. Because you're going to be disappointed throughout the rest of your life with people saying things that you don't agree with. Okay, so for those of you who don't understand, everybody thinks Jehovah's Witnesses are weird. No, they're not weird. What they do is they, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 is the scripture that is drilled into people's heads. Why? Because bad association with individuals will spoil your useful habits, the habits that you picked up that are good habits. And every time I hung around mother who had no good habits whatsoever, people like you, I ended up violating my God's laws. And sometimes I hung around people like you on purpose. Well, I don't do that anymore. I'd rather be alone. 
than to have somebody convince me to do something that ain't supposed to be done or think it's okay to curse around me. But you heard me. See, I don't allow people to curse around me, but I have allowed it. Why? Because I didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Because I was more concerned about people's feelings than I was about right and wrong. So ladies and gentlemen, these are our last days. If you can't see that these are the last days as prophesied in scripture, then I can't help you and it's not my job to help you. But what I can tell you, what I can guarantee you, is that a lot of people want to be my friend. You cannot be my friend. If you're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, then you cannot be my friend. If that makes you want to unsubscribe, because these videos are not done for Jehovah's Witnesses. These videos are done for you. Why? Because you need help. That's why they're done. That's why I don't do them as a Jehovah's Witness. I do them for you. I created SACCOM. I created SAA Limited. Yes, I created those organizations for you. I created the Legal Redress Commission for you. I didn't do this for Jehovah's Witnesses. That's why I don't help Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, why not? Because their confidence and their reliance is supposed to be on Jehovah. They're not supposed to be coming to me. Trust me. Go talk to any Jehovah's Witness who has contacted me thinking that I was going to be that nice person. And ask them how I've treated them. They get treated the same as you when it comes to this information. Because their confidence, their strength, their stronghold, their arm, their shield, their salvation, their refuge. I can go on and on and on. It's supposed to be in Jehovah and his beloved son, Christ Jesus. They are supposed to be going to him, exercising faith in him, not in me. But you all, no, you all, this information you need because this is information that you are trying to perfect. That you don't have these pieces of the puzzle. I have pieces of a puzzle that you have been trying to solve and you can't get these pieces from anyone else for free. Nobody is willing to give you these pieces for free. They're willing to charge you. And then when they charge you, they only give you a limited amount of the information. A limited amount. They, you pay them and they don't give you everything. And then they want to keep milking you for money. I just want you guys to understand, go take a look. I'm not milking anybody for money. I promised people that if they helped out with my current situation as being really, that I would have time to give them information. So let me see if I kept my word because I, I don't want nobody accusing me of lying to anyone because that's the first thing people will say that I haven't done what I promised I was gonna do. The first words to come out of their mouth. So I want y'all to take a look. This is just April 5th, so that's the first one. One, come on now, mouse, two, three, four, five videos on the fifth. That's just on the fifth, on the fourth. One, two, three, four, four videos on the fourth. Okay, that's nine videos in two days of information for you all. And <laughs> Wait a minute, one of them is an hour and 12 minutes long. Hold on, hold on. Another one is an hour and six minutes long. Oh, not oh, hour and 47 minutes long. Another hour long, 48 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever had anybody do a video, I even told you, one of these videos, where is it at? I think it's the 24 minute. No, it's not the 24 minute video. It is the 34 minute video. That's why it says this took two and a half hours to upload. That is wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that it had uploaded. It didn't upload until the following day. This thing took over 12 hours to upload. Just that one video. One video. Matter of fact, I'm going to change that right now. Uh-uh. I want everybody to know the amount of effort that goes into this so that they don't go around saying that I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart that I owe you all anything. I gave people my word that if they were to have helped out, and they did, that's why I haven't asked for nothing else. Go back and look, I haven't asked for nothing. That if they were to assist 
that I would have more time to give them information. Now, a lot of people are telling me, man, I can't even keep up with your videos. They're just too many. You better believe they're too many. Because I told you, if I had the time to do them, I would do them. I would give you the information. Hey, do you have a program? you have a class? you have a school? Yes, I do. It's right here on YouTube. All you got to do is sit and listen. Look at the amount of information you've gathered just by listening. Now, look, I want you all to understand because I've said this before because many of you don't understand. I've gone back and I've re-listened to some of my videos, well, many of my videos. And I want you, and this is going to be difficult for you to understand, but do you not understand that I learn stuff as well just by going back and listening to my own videos? Why? Because you don't get it. A lot of this stuff I don't study. A lot of this stuff you just hear me talking. I'm just proving to you it is what it is. But I'm not taking any information as I'm talking. I'm just talking to you. I'm explaining it to you. For instance, I just said to everybody, hey, 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 stop going into these courts and mouthing off and saying all this other junk. The first thing you do when you walk into a courtroom is you go, hey, mother, uh, I'm challenging your jurisdiction. That's just it. I'm challenging you. Just, just shut up. I don't want to hear none of that other stuff. Either you got jurisdiction, no, because until you prove you have jurisdiction, you have no control over me or this hearing. So put the proof on the record or shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have the right to do that? Well, you'll get yelled at by the appeals court, but you have every right to do that. They must have jurisdiction. If they don't have jurisdiction, they don't have the right to say anything to you or direct you to do anything or command you. Can you turn around and walk out? Technically, by law, you can turn around and walk out if they don't prove jurisdiction. Prove jurisdiction, not say jurisdiction. Prove jurisdiction on the record. Police show up. We got a warrant for your arrest. Where's the warrant? Well, we got, no, no, get your hands off me, mother. Show me the warrant. The law says that you must produce the warrant upon demand. Show me the warrant. Show me the judge's signature. If you don't have that, then you better either call somebody else or get a supervisor out here because you will show me that warrant. And if you didn't have the warrant when you arrived, I don't want to hear nothing about you waiting for it. If you didn't have the warrant when you arrived, that means you had no jurisdiction to be here. Get off my property. Now, mind you, you and I both know that they're not going to listen. They're just going to do what they're going to do. But that's your issue on appeal, and you don't let that go. If you get a public defender, say, excuse me, you work for the state. You work for the county. Well, it's the state and the county that's coming at me. So get out of my face. I want somebody who doesn't work for the state or the county. And then when you get to court, hey, you're on, I want myself a grievance attorney. That's a conflict of interest. He can't work for the state and be suing me at the same time and then be rep No, no, he can't do that. That's a conflict of interest. Get this month out of my face. Oh. Wait a minute, hold on. And whoever you give me can't be an officer of the court. What do I mean? Well, here's the thing. The attorneys work for the executive branch. That's right, they're under the governor or the president. One or the other, they're working for the executive branch. You're supposed to be a part of the judicial branch, and I'm going to presume that you're part of the judicial branch unless you show me proof otherwise. And I mean proof that appears on the record that you ain't part of the judicial branch. And since you sitting up there acting like a judge, since you were put in here, by constitutional process, then I'm going to presume that you are judge under the judicial branch government. If you're judge of the judicial branch government, they can't be officers of the court. If they officer to the court, that means that you have violated the separation of powers clause because they cannot share power with you, mother... Okay? I've been trying to scream this to you guys so that you get it. So that you get that they have been doing things as a practice, not as a law, They've been doing it as a practice. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, there will be lawyers and judges who will disagree with me. But what they won't be able to do is prove to you that what I'm saying is wrong. Go ahead. Let me show you something. Whether it is by way of a rule or in a responsive plea, a rule, why would I be following a rule? They're supposed to be following the law. Show me the law that says you can do this, and then I will follow a rule. Follow the leader, Rockham will say peace. Ordinarily, a challenge to personal jurisdiction. Who ever said it had to be personal? There are three jurisdictions the court must establish. Why do I have to say personal? Why don't they prove they have all three elements of jurisdiction? 
it's not me. I got to challenge specifically personal jurisdiction. No, I just challenge jurisdiction. Originally, uh, ordinarily, ordinarily, a challenge to personal jurisdiction must be raised in the district court early in the proceedings in a responsive pleading. Really, why is this? Why do they have this as a rule? In every court. Now, by the way, this is Minnesota. Ladies and gentlemen, by the rule, this is, by the way, this is Minnesota. Now, I want you guys to pay attention. By the way, this is Minnesota. Their rule is the same as the federal rule. Why is that? Because they're all district courts. Go ahead. Just showed you that yesterday. This is uh, Washington because I know that. Um, let's see, where are you at, Washington? Anyway, they have a rule. Criminal Rule 12H, a challenge to personal jurisdiction must be asserted either by motion filed before filing the answer or in the answer. Civil criminal is the same, people. You must challenge their jurisdiction over your person. If they don't listen, that's your appeal. You can do an interlocutory appeal, but you do an appeal. I hope you all understand. That's why I'm doing this. Because they are continually causing you problems. Don't hold on now. They say, well, they put you in jail twice that I know of. That's right. They did. Now, I want you to pay attention because I love it when people bring that up. And each time they put me in there, you saw they kicked me out, right? I've been kicked out of jail four times. Kicked out. Because they thought they were hurting me. Arizona told me that I was the first person in 52 years to be kicked out of prison. Arizona told me that. Puerto Rico, <laughs> sorry, I got to laugh because Puerto Rico was hilarious. They literally took all of my property, took me and sat me outside the prison and say, you had to pick this up and have it removed by morning or we're throwing it in the trash. You, you gone, you released. Literally, that was Puerto Rico, okay? Because I don't mind going in the belly of the beast because I told you I will rip the beast apart from the inside. I caused Puerto Rico so many problems because you're not just going to cause me problems. And I'm about to cause the state of California problems because I told them to leave me, to leave me alone. And they decided they weren't going to. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to cause the entire system a problem because we're doing judicial complaints against these judicial officers for operating as judicial officers under their oath of office, which was done under constitutional process while acting in an administrative capacity. While acting in administrative capacity. They cannot act in an administrative capacity. Some people have asked me for a copy of this already. I've already said to all of you, that when it's done, I will put a copy online for all of you to have access to. I said, you'll have to wait until I'm finished. And of course, people didn't listen to the whole video. They only listened to what they wanted to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't do videos like everybody else. My videos require that you listen all the way through. The reason why my videos require that you listen all the way through is because that's the way it's done. My videos, I speak on way too many different subjects in one video. That's why I can't give it all one simple title. Well, why don't you just talk about one thing and that way you don't, because I don't work that way. I don't work that way. There was too much information that intertwines, too much information that deals with the same thing. My videos are secessional, not sensational, secessional. They follow one behind the other. So if I talked about something yesterday, I'm continuing that conversation today. Do you understand? So that's how you pay attention to my videos. If you find a video that's talking about old taxes, then you have to go to the video just prior to that or the one just after that because the issue of taxes may not be in the title, but I promise you I'm going to be talking about taxes in that video. That's how my videos are done, especially when they're sensational. Sensational? Secessional, mother. Okay. 
when they're secessional, one right behind the other, they're going to pretty much stick to that format. Okay, now what we're not going to do with this, we're not going to keep all of these facts the way that they are. We're going to use most of these at the end as memorandums, the same as we just did. Do you understand? So that's what I have to work on today. And hold on, just want you to understand, I would not have that as an idea or a thought if it were not for this video right here. Because as I was doing this, my mind, while talking to you, that's what my mind was thinking about. Yes, my mind multitasks all the time. It doesn't stay on just one thing. I know, I can tell when you do your videos, you talk about so many things, then you never get back to the subject. Well, you better all pay attention. Because I've been getting back to the subject on a regular basis lately. Because many of you have complained that I start to mention something, and all of a sudden I go to something else and I never get back to it. Okay? So now I've made it a point to mention it and come back to it. When we gonna get to it? Come on, get to it. When we gonna get to it? When we gonna get to it? Okay, I'm making the point to bring you guys back to one, Brian McKnight, because that's where we started. So now, and the reason why I highlighted that in yellow, because this is where the form continues and this is where they do explanations. Now they do say that the courts have the right. See how we're talking about the complaint against judges? They say that the courts have the right to ignore your complaint because it's an administrative process. So they have the right to ignore you. It's not considered a petition for redress. Ours is a petition for redress. That's why we're not going under a rule. We're going under a right. There's a difference between a rule and a right. Go and learn what's the difference between a rule and a right. A rule is a privilege. A right is a guarantee. So go take a look. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you just said all right. Uh, have a good day, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.